So can you tell me a few things very quickly about the the author, the novel, something, a few things that you gathered from here and there. Does this belong to the 1930s and 40s? This novel? Yeah, this is 54, 55. Yeah. And, but still, you know, this is always discussed along with the 30s, 40s novel because of the theme. Because it's also a literary depiction of Gandhi nationalist struggle in a very different uh, form altogether. Some even say that this is a sequel to uh, Kantapura. Yeah. And it has also been seen as in a different way compared to Kantapura and Untouchable. Gandhi figures in both all three novels, Kantapura, Untouchable and uh, um, Waiting for Mahatma, but it's generally said that in Waiting for uh, Waiting for the Mahatma, it, the, uh, the character of Gandhi is portrayed in a very different way, not in a symbolic way like in the other two novels like Kantapura and Untouchable. In a more, uh, Gandhi is a real character in Waiting for the Mahatma. Yeah, uh, a, a quick plot summary. Even if you're there, like, just halfway through, I think you'll be able to share that. So uh, this uh, novel is about Nkar Sri Ram. Yeah. Uh, he is born and brought up in uh, Malgudi by uh, his grand, uh, grandmother. Yeah, Malgudi, as you know, is also this fictional uh, village in which most of, uh, almost all of Narayan's novels are set. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, his father died uh, in a war in Mesopotamia mm. and mother died definitely in the first line, it says that, while delivering him. Mm. So, uh, he is very dear to his grandmother and uh, Every month the pension comes and she saves <coughs> it for him in the nearby bank so that she could someday hand over the passbook to him when he grows up. Okay. So um, it, it goes on and then suddenly um, uh, after the, uh, there is Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi's program to visit the Malgudi in the nearby villages and um, he, uh, he, before that in the market he, saw, he sees a girl uh, named uh, Bharti. So uh, he develops a liking for her, and uh, when at the at the program she uh, he sees her on the podium, and uh, that's that's the reason why he joins uh, Mahatma Gandhi and the and the group for like uh, and the, like he goes around the villages and just because he wanted to be with her. Okay, did he have any idea of Gandhi and the nationalism movement before that? Uh, not really. Not really. Yeah. So. The, uh, the program goes on for a few days and he travels around the villages and uh, develops some sort of liking for what Mahatma is doing mm. and certain and develops some reverence towards uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Hmm. And okay, this will do for the time being. Yeah. Anybody else with any other detail that you found interesting in the first segment? How does this protagonist come across in comparison to Murti of Kantapura? Shiram is more human, he's yeah. very infallible hmm. and no, I mean he's, he's not infallible and he's throughout not you infallible, that's what yeah. you meant. Yeah. Yeah. And and throughout he's he's just blundering along basically. Yeah. And uh, and you see the movement through his eyes, hmm. which I suppose is most people hmm. yeah, at that time who were unaware of the politics yeah. behind. And I think Narayan throws an interesting detail. Th there's a scene where the Mahatma comes and they have a palatial house ready for him. And mm. and I think that's the area where he talks about caste. Right. But uh, yeah, it's just that Shriram is very, very befuddled throughout the novel. It's yeah. And, and also the novel shows us how uh, ordinary people respond to the movement. Yeah. Not an idealist, not a Gandhian. And he's not even sure. We don't know, don't even know whether he has a political position hmm. or not. Yeah, he is uh, just you know, just drifting through life in a, uh, so to speak. And the only thing which motivates him is uh, meeting Bharti, having a relation with Bharti. Yeah. So other than that, we don't find him very passionate about uh, anything. Yeah. And along the way, of course, you know, he develops certain sorts of. Uh, uh, political knowledge as he puts it and he also you know his way of thinking also changes yeah and uh, other than that when we compare it to the other two novels in fact this is not a very well informed protagonist yeah like she said you know a very um, more human protagonist more ordinary yeah somebody who is not uh, thinking about the right 
responds to either to Gandhi or to the nation, yeah, who is also conscious of his own limitations. Yeah. The same reason has made this novel very popular as well as you know not so enduring to a number of critics. They thought it was a too simplistic uh, portrayal of the movement and Gandhi and uh, the, the critical opinion re de remains quite divided in that respect. This is because of, of all the three, the triumvirate, uh, Raja Rao, Anand and uh, uh, Narayan, he was the most popular and most successful in the sense that you know in terms of the readership that he enjoyed and all. But he was also seen as the most apolitical of the three. The other two, the, the political commitments and the writings of the other two writers, Raja Rao and uh, Anand's we will see uh, shortly when we take a look at Untouchable. So their political commitments were very clear, they were, no, there was no ambiguity about it. But with Narayan except for this novel, this novel is considered, Waiting for the Mahatma is seen as the most political of her, all of his novels. Yeah. Which are the other novels of Narayan that you are familiar with? Guide. Guide. Swami, and, Swami, and, uh, Swami and his friends. Yeah. So, we do not see a sense of overt political activity, overt political um, ideology, any of those things you know pervading his works except for uh, this one. How would you talk about the politics in this work? Is there an overt celebration of anything? There is Gandhi in the beginning, towards the end you know, uh, who is the other uh, nationalist character who emerges? towards the end, towards the uh, latter half of the novel. There is no character, we only hear the voice. Who is that? Subhash, Subhash Chandra Bose. Yeah. So, and, and maybe you know he also had the advantage of looking back and having a different viewpoint altogether given that you know this is the post independence period, 1954, 55 was the period when it was published. So, you all, this is also like uh, uh, some six years after Gandhi's death. Yeah. And again, six to seven years after the moment of independence. So, maybe he also has the advantage of uh, having a different vantage point altogether. And uh, this is something that uh, Srinivas Iyengar wrote about this novel that Gandhi is too big. Yeah, in any novelistic uh, scenario, Iyengar says Gandhi is too big to be given a minor part. On the other hand, he is sure to turn the novel into his own biography if he, if he is given a major central part. Yeah? So, in that sense, he thinks Narayan's writing is quite a success in the sense that Gandhi is there as one of the major characters, but the story is not about Gandhi either. The story continues to be about Sri Ram and the way you know he uh, journeys through this turbulent period. Yeah? It, the, the focus does not even for a moment shift from Sri Ram's story and his uh, in, in uh, the uh, romance with uh, Bharati towards you know placing Gandhi as a central figure of the entire novel. But at some level we know that Gandhi is also a major character who influenced his decisions, uh, who influenced you know his uh, uh, you know whatever he was going through at particular points of time. And uh, unlike Untouchable and Kantapura like I said many have argued that Gandhi is a real character and not a symbol over here. Yeah, there is a certain kind of romanticization of Gandhi, a certain kind of you know uh, uh, iconic status given to Gandhi which I do not think any writer during that period could escape from. Apart from that, we do not see much of a, uh, a Gandhi worshipping rhetoric throughout the novel. There is There are certain occasions when we you know we quite uh, uh, find this uh, Sridhar's humor and response is very endearing, yeah, the way he participates in certain things. You remember there is this scene where he meets uh, an ordinary person on the road and you know uh, the, that person is saying, you know, he is pulling a cart and he says, why are these Gandhi people making a lot of nuisance and disturbance for us? He is asking, Sridhar is asking, do you know why, uh, uh, so not Sridhar, sorry, Sriram. Sriram is asking, yeah. Why are you, uh, I mean, why are you saying all, all of these things? Do you know why Gandhi is in jail? Yeah, it's for people like you to make you a free man and you are not a free man. Yeah, we also get the irony of it. Sometimes, you know, he is, we feel uh, Sri Ram is not talking to, other, to the others, but he's talking to himself. Yeah, we are not because otherwise we do not get any sense of uh, them being under uh, fetters and un under, you know, we do not get any sense of the ordinary person being under slavery under the British. On the other hand, Sri Ram in the beginning comes across as someone who is enjoying all of those things. Yeah, remember one of the scenes in the beginning when he goes to the shopkeeper that he is very fond of, yeah, the neighborhood shop and he asks for a portrait, yeah, 
like whose portrait is that and you know it's so uh, the shopkeeper says uh, maybe it's Queen Victoria I don't know but that has uh, brought me good luck yeah and he also says you know at any point when you are planning to give it away yeah I'll be willing to take it so it also shows the the kind of uh, interest and the kind of uh, uh, you know enthusiasm he also has for all kinds of foreign goods yeah but after uh, Bharati comes into his life and through that you know he encounters Gandhi we find him a totally changed man but we, we are not very sure whether that's a uh, real change of heart or you know whether that can ag again undergo a change at some point or the other and this event of uh, and, and also in terms of the mm, action which is uh, uh, set unlike the other novels of uh, uh, Narayan this is not entirely in Ma Malguri the action strays a bit and goes till uh, Delhi at some point and in, uh, so it is also you know uh, we do not know whether uh, like we discussed in the earlier session about whether it is important for one to move out of the home space to be to participate in the nation yeah so we do not know whether you know that acts as a compulsion here also and unlike other the other novels which do not talk about the nation here we find the action straying a bit to Delhi as well yes Nelson. But uh, different, uh, somewhat different from the Indulekha, like where he yes. went outside. Yeah. I think there is a difference. Like mm. uh, when, when uh, what was the character Madhavan huh. uh, was leaving the leaving from the, his hometown and going to uh, that Bombay and Kolkata. It seems like when he was talking about the diversity of the uh, Bombay or something like. It seems like he's visiting some place like in the uh, during the French Revolution. Some somebody visiting mm. the. Uh, I mean France and like observing everything and you get a lot of enticing ideas and all it hmm. seems like that in that because there was no sense of I think that time before Gandhi came there was no sense of national Nation. Indian -ness that yeah. much I mean yes. Yes. Was, and yeah. and in this case it has already Gandhi has become so popular it's very yes. interesting in that other case where the chairman where he was going to be he also wanted to, like they converted to like uh, to Indianness, like they wanted to redecorate their house with khadi, like they wanted to wear the khadi. Like yes. it was like some kind of popular culture started. I think popular yes. culture started in, with yeah. Gandhi. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, just like, it's interesting. Right. right. How that he brought everyone together because yes. of maybe his popularity. But yeah. It's yes. Yeah. Also taking off from what Nelson just said. Uh, in Kantapura, Gandhi is not a character, he is being you know uh, showcased through the figure of Murthy. <coughs> Here also though uh, Gandhi is a real character, we find that there is a certain way in which yeah, some Gandhian culture is being you know imported to every village yeah, through certain set of things. Yeah, people behaving in such a way as if you know if you have these set of things, if you have khadi, if you have you know the uh, if you have you know homespun clothes, yeah, if you have a certain kind of an image that is a guarantee that the Mahatma is going to like it yeah? and also talking in a certain language using certain uh, a certain register yeah? remember you know he initially uh, the, the character Sri Ram feels that you know I do not know the right uh, I do not have the right kind of language to talk to uh, Gandhi and then he gets himself uh, you know, schooled in a certain uh, political rhetoric and then he says now I think uh, Mahatma is pleased yeah he uses those sort of words you know the right kind of words about service about the attitude about being non-violent yeah so the the the, the uh, uh, the image of you know the the my metaphor of non-violence it's invoked so much that we don't even know whether he actually believes in that uh, by himself or not yeah uh, uh, Sri Ram at, at various points in fact uh, uh, we don't know whether he is putting up all of this act whether he is deceiving himself yeah because there are only certain points after his encounter with Gandhi when when uh, he is allowed to be his own true self that uh, instant when his grandmother dies and you know, comes back yeah and uh, that time you know there is a, a certain section of the novel which says you know that moment he could not think of anything not, not the British not Bharati not Gandhi yeah so there are there is a way in which Gandhi enters his life and dominates in such a way that you know he does not even know whether it is proper to behave in the other way after in his own you know uh, apolitical totally ignorant way. It, um, after having met Gandhi, it is also this question whether he will be actually able to go back to that status of you know extreme naivety where he only knew about what was going on in his life, what grandmother was telling him yeah those sort of things yeah. There has been a lot of uh, criticism against Narayan that he is not a, 
a politically committed a novelist. Yeah. What do you think about that? Completely unnecessary for a novelist to be politically. Huh. And also, uh, by today's standards, even if you are apolitical, it becomes political mm. in the sense that it is mm. everybody else's set that makes you eligible to be a political and see. Hmm. So, from that point of view, how would you analyze the politics which we see in the a politics that we see in uh, Narayan's novel? This one. Yeah. Do you think it's political in any way? Whether Narayan was conscious of it or not, that's a different question altogether. He yeah. may not be committed to huh. a political stance here. Huh. But he talks about politics, but hmm. I don't think he's committed. It's hmm. more like a character study hmm. of some people than a political analysis of that nation. Yeah. Th that itself could be seen as a different kind of politics that he's employing, though again, you know, inadvertently, because Gandhi, reducing Gandhi to a character. Yeah, I, I hope you're getting what I'm uh, saying. Yeah, reducing him to just another character and not like you know an, uh, a divine, religious, iconic, uh, uh, visionary figure. Yeah, so this sort of a reduction from that status to just that of a character was something most many critics were uh, uh, uncomfortable with. And also, Narayan plays a lot with irony. Yeah, there is a very nice blend of uh, humor and irony which. The other two novelists, Raja Rao and uh, Anand, they had not really, uh, you know, toyed with these things when they were talking about the nation or about uh, Gandhi. Very briefly, you know, in uh, there is this uh, story by uh, Raja Rao, Cow and uh, Cow and the Barricades. Yeah, there, you know, he does employ a sense of irony and humor when he talks about uh, the nationalist movement because the story is about a cow. It's a very interesting story. But other than that, you know, we do not find many of them playfully engaging with. Gandhi, yeah, they uh, that is also in a certain way, you know, we can attribute it to the different kind of uh, political belief system that Narayan had. If you uh, go through the other novels of uh, Narayan, also, we find that you know, he is deliberately going against many of the traditional uh, belief systems and he is questioning the uh, order of the society, yeah. So, it is a very different rhetoric uh, we get altogether from Narayan's novels, but again, you know. Personally, it has also been said that uh, he was a uh, very staunch traditionalist. We do not find him straying away from any of those, uh, you know, uh, set uh, rules of the society or of the religion or caste. Yeah, or even in, in terms of the politics, we do not really get to know what his commitments were. Uh, just you know, uh, drawing your attention to a couple of instances in the novel, you know, where certain things. Uh, which were part of the nationalist slogan are being used with you know a lot of irony like we are an infant nation yeah and uh, the uh, Sh Sh Sridham the character tells us you know nobody really know, uh, knew what it meant but it sounded very good yeah that we are an infant nation yeah and about the use of that quit India uh, episode yeah where he is you know he is uh, uh, painting uh, 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 not painting he is doing this uh, um, what is he doing graffiti. yeah the graffiti on the wall quit India and wh what does he think about the letter Q? It's He's trying to plunder the Indians out of their black ink and say imperial uh, Yeah. Like the tail of the tree. Yeah. 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 So, he is actually, Narayan is even mocking the way in which the nationalist rhetoric it's is being used to. The way yeah. he is mocking is he has this peculiar way of like expressing the people's lives hmm. in that like the there comes a time when th there is a class of ideas and uh, nationalism coming to those lives. Mm. So it's like uh, so for in any view, it will look like uh, like that irony and all those funny like how we see that it will become like that because he's not political. Yeah. If he's serious about the nationalism, you you can't see the in that way. But in this uh, in this pe his peculiar way of telling the stories of these common people, mm. so he gets to. Uh, express such kind of expression like in, in such forms. What do you think about you know the the language which is used in that sense yeah, language in the sense not the uh, language of the novel but the language of politics which is used in the novel the the nationalist rhetoric which is built into it can we say that you know it is more often in an ironical way in a satirical way than in a very matter of fact serious way. 
whenever nationalism is being talked about, yeah, we also will find some ironic twist to it towards the end. Either you know, one of the characters, uh, they'll make a blunder, or uh, Sri Ram himself will not be convinced of what he is saying. Yeah, and even when he is trying to convince the others, it sounds as if you know. Sri Ram is actually trying to convince himself yeah? and thinking about you know uh, uh, after he um, uh, says something he is also you know in his mind he is weighing the responses of Bharati and Gandhi. Will they be pleased? Should I, should I say something more about service or about non-violence so that they will be pleased? They will also fit him very perfectly into this you know ongoing uh, nationalist uh, movement. Yeah? And this character um, uh, Bharati, yeah, what, what, what does the novel tell us about the name Bharati? What does it stand for? Yeah. She's the daughter of me. Yeah, she uh, Bharti tells this, uh, you know, tells the tells Sri Ram about how she was named. Just when I was born, and he learned of it, uh, Bapuji, who had come down south, made himself my godfather and named me Bharati, which means I hope you know that yes, Bharati is India, and Bharati is the daughter of India, I suppose. Yeah, so it's a there's a very direct connection of the name. We don't know whether you know this is being given to us in an ironic sense. Yeah show that you know see um, uh, the nation is also a an important <coughs> character in the uh, novel and what do you think about this character Bharati she comes across as this perfect contrast to Sri Ram she is also an orphan just like um, Sri Ram Sri Ram was raised by his grandmother but Bharati was raised by you know, <coughs> almost like a set of uh, people who shared the same set of uh, values with the nationalist movement and she was brought up with that. Yeah. She comes across as the other extreme who is not really aware of you know, another side of the society which is not in close touch with the nationalist movement. Yeah. And both of them in fact you know, they both of them uh, represent two extreme positions where <laughs> there is a compulsion to on the one hand you know, uh, Bharati thinks this is the ideal life that anyone should be living. And on the other hand, Sri, uh, Sri Ram thinks that yes, maybe this is the ideal life, but I don't know like how I do, why I don't feel committed enough, which is why you know he meets this character towards the in the latter half of the uh, novel, you know, who introduces him to um, Subhash Chandra Bose. What's the name of the character? Jagadish, yeah, and just when Jagadish says, you know, I don't see any point in going to jail, suddenly he feels, oh, finally I'm meeting my kindred soul, yeah. He begins to blab. I have always been telling Bharati that she's a fool, and yeah, so she, he is also like suddenly excited that I am not really, not really because of my own limitation, but there is another position also that I can say inhabit, yeah, with a little bit of uh, violence, with a little bit of you know natural responses. So I think uh, Narayan was also trying to show us the dichotomy over here about you know the complete inability to adopt Gandhian standards and also the need to bring in someone like uh, Subhash Chandra Bose, how he also appealed to the uh, nation, a certain set of people in some form or the other. But you also get to realize you know how the politics work here, works over here, like uh, how one could be very very open about their allegiance to Gandhi. But that sort of an openness is not possible when it comes to uh, Subhash Chandra Bose. Yeah, how you know, you, uh, I hope you have reached those uh, uh, scenes, uh, those uh, episodes where you know he has to hide the uh, radio and he is taking down notes for uh, Jagdish about you know uh, the various addresses that uh, Subhash Chandra Bose is uh, uh, you know uh, making to the nation. Yeah, and uh, finally, what happens to the character, to Sri Ram? What happens to him? Have you reached that? stage where he gets jailed, does that experience change him in any way? Disinterested in him, mm. becomes more indifferent to the world mm. and once he is out of jail it's already independent, mm. I mean the India has become independent at yeah. that kind of time and yeah. he feels it so strange to mm. sit on a park bench. Mm. I mean mm. there is a kind of thing <laughs> But again, I think after that episode, he goes back to his older self, where he is, yeah. And uh, there is this part when he tells Gandhi that I was busy or turning frames and hold, yeah. as a matter of fact, like mm -hmm. in a plain talk. Yeah. It's like more mellow down. Yeah. Character. Yes. So I was also <coughs> wondering, given the way in which the dominant nationalist politics is being engaged with in the novel, 
can we really say that this is an apolitical novel? Yeah? Again, regardless of where, what Narayan's original intentions were. Yeah? Because we are being introduced to a novel where Gandhi is the major figure and at the same time there is no overt glorification of Gandhi or the nationalist politics. There is this protagonist who gets enthralled into the Gandhian politics and the novelist is allowing the character to become disillusioned. The novelist is allowing the uh, character to feel uh, a sense of irony towards many things that he is practicing as part of the Gandhian politics. Yeah? So, I think that thing is also very important, but it has been not been really talked about much in the critical oeuvre of Indian writing in English, maybe also because you know it will take us away from the focus of how the story of Indian writing in English has been told, yeah, about you know Indian writing, in, uh, uh, especially novel emerges as a as a uh, genre which can very effectively deal with the nation, yeah, which can very effectively bring the nationalist movement closer to the uh, uh, masses and suddenly talking about this novel which stutters those sorts of narrations maybe you know it is a bit problematic as well. Maybe the most convenient thing then is to say that you know he is apolitical yeah not to talk about you know the ways in which the dominance accorded to Gandhi is being overturned in some form or the other. Yeah, we do not have a perfect character at all over there and in a certain way we can even say that he is a better storyteller than the other two writers when it comes to the uh, <coughs> depiction of Gandhi as a character and uh, uh, in, 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 in a certain way in, in, in such a way that Gandhi is actually allowed to be a mere character yeah. because we do get to uh, if, if we are not conscious about you know the uh, nationalist movement and the back, the political background and this you know high iconic figure, uh, high iconic image which is being attributed to Gandhi and if we access Gandhi only to the eye, only through the eyes of uh, uh, the protagonist, yeah, it becomes entirely possible to look at Gandhi in a different way altogether. I think that is a very important difference that Narayan brings in, in the context of these other uh, literary novels which talk about Gandhi and nationalist movement. So, I want you to think about how this uh, you know the labeling of the uh, novel as being apolitical, the labeling of uh, Narayan as a uh, non-committal writer when it comes to politics. Yeah? I want you to rethink those uh, aspects uh, with, with, you, with, the, with your own <coughs> reading that you would bring in and also later again perhaps we can look back at this novel through a post-colonial lens. Yeah? How, uh, how you know a uh, different sort of a narration of Gandhi is being enabled by this entire thing and, and overall we can see that you know there is a generous do dose of irony which is being employed right from the beginning till the end yeah and also it is uh, being brought in in such a way that you know we are not even too conscious of it yeah it is being uh, uh, you know woven into the narrative of the novel uh, without too many uh, you know any any sort of being too, too presumptuous about that. Yeah. Even the way in which Gandhi becomes a character in the novel, it is not a major event. Yeah. Gandhi is just able to walk into the novel. Yeah. It is not being presented as the major event which really you know uh, turned the life of uh, the uh, Malgudi village upside down. No. It turned the life of uh, Sri Ram upside down, not because of the nationalist movement again, but only because Bharati was there. Yeah. So, which again you know uh, underscores this use of irony over here as if you know you take Parthi out of the picture and uh, you do not have Sri Ram emerging as a uh, devout Gandhian in any form. Yeah? Maybe it is also trying to tell us that a uh, lot of others who were following Gandhi, maybe they all had their Bharatis in life, yeah? were they all pursuing Gandhi <coughs> and the nationalist movement or were they all pursuing their own interests. Yeah? was Narayan trying to say that as well because he is also writing in the early uh, 50s when uh, uh, mid 50s when there is also a growing disillusionment with the uh, independence which has just come to the nation yeah a uh, sudden realization that you know things are not really you know uh, how we thought it would be even after the British had left things are not getting better. So, there is this disillusionment which is growing this you know reaches its peak in the 1960s yeah. So, uh, we, we do not even know whether he is trying to be critical in a certain way without again not trying to be overtly uh, critical about it either.
And what about the character of Gandhi? What kind of Gandhi? Forget about the other things that we, all, we always already know about Gandhi. Uh, how does uh, Gandhi emerge as a character in the novel? Does the novel talk about any supernatural qualities that this leader has? What are the ways in which Gandhi is being presented? He can read the thoughts of other person. Mm. That's what author says. Mm. Other than that, he's quite a like normal human being. Yeah. He's being presented more or less like a human being with whom you can have all kinds of uh, conversations. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, there is a way in which Gandhi is situated as an infallible person who can judge others, but still, you know, he would refrain from judging others because he's also benevolent, generous. There's a way in which the common uh, ideas about Gandhi has also fed into the novel, but it makes it possible to engage with Gandhi as a just another uh, ordinary uh, character of any novel. Yeah. Do you think the novel would make a sense if you are not aware of the nationalist movement at all? If somebody is reading the novel, yeah, a non-Indian who is not familiar with the nationalist movement or the various undertones of it, if such a person is reading the novel, would it make sense to him or not? Most probably not because when mm. we read other fiction, like foreign ah. fiction, ah. which has the history, mm. doesn't make much sense unless we are familiar with this. But if Gandhi is only a character over here, no, Why would it not make sense? Because you need to know Gandhi before you read the novel. Can you elaborate? I mean, we should be aware of the God like Gandhi before reading this novel hmm. to see that this is a human like Gandhi. Because if we don't know about Gandhi, then it won't make much sense. Like the ironic part, hmm. it won't make any sense. Hmm. We won't find it ironical. Hmm. Because if we are encountering Gandhi as human for the first time, doesn't make sense. Good. That also brings me to this point. If you are reading the novel and the moment you realize <coughs> you know, there is this visit of Gandhi which is happening, yeah? as readers, we also have a set of images propping up. Yeah? At every point, even when Gandhi is being consciously presented as a novel, maybe the novelist and the readers are always already aware that no this is not just about Gandhi yeah there is more to him there is more to all of those things and at some point you know we even feel that it's just that Sriram is not able to really grasp entirely what Gandhi and nationalist movement is all about yeah so like uh, Anandjit was saying we don't know whether uh, Narayan was also playing you know with this feeling of the audience that even even if he doesn't tell us who Gandhi is, the reader will have a godlike image of uh, Gandhi. So the moment Gandhi arrives, we also like wonder, okay, so what is Sri Ram going to be going to do there? Yeah, because he's got nothing to do with nationalist politics. He doesn't even have an inkling about, you know, protesting or oust, uh, protesting against the uh, colonial power or ousting them. Yeah, he's got no affinity towards any of those things. Yeah, so the contrast is very evident in our own mind, even when we are reading it. Yeah, and when Subhash Chandra Bose emerges, his voice emerges as a character. Again, you know, we know where to place all of them. Yeah, so even the the at some level. The author doesn't have to judge any of those characters. We already do that. Yeah? We already have these towering images yeah? so that it becomes easy for us to slot them into, you know, conveniently slot them into different groups. Yeah? And, uh, and, and maybe because of that, many critics also find it convenient to talk about at least certain kind of politics. Yeah? The moment that is not eulogizing Indian National Congress, not eulogizing Gandhi entirely, that ceases to be political. Yeah? And this is again, you know, something which is built into the critical framework of Indian uh, fiction in English, I would say, because even earlier, when tracing the genealogy of the novel, yeah, the moment any kind of political activity is being talked about, any kind of political attitude is being talked about, which is not from, which is not an offshoot of Indian National Congress, which is not an offshoot of Gandhian politics, that at that, that moment we find Meenakshi Mukherjee or certain other critics also saying, yeah, that's just a politics of some simplistic variety. 
Yeah, that is not real politics that we uh, are talking about. Yeah, so maybe this thing was there in Narayan's mind as well when he was talking about you know because he didn't want to be overtly politically committed at all. Yeah, but on hindsight, now that we have the advantage of looking back from a post-colonial uh, through a post-colonial lens, it becomes also evident that even through this apolitical stance, yeah, there is a certain politics that he is inadvertently projecting. He does not, you know, take it to a greater length. For instance, you know, the chapters where they talk about untouchability, yeah, how Gandhi <coughs> could not really bring about a change in the minds of the people, yeah. He does not take it to the other, uh, you know, take it to a uh, next step by the, uh, Narayan does not take the novel to the next step by trying to analyze what is really in Gandhi's mind, yeah, that would have become a real kind of a play of politics. But in the followers of Gandhi, in those, you know, visible acts of obedience that they are showing towards Gandhian ideology, towards Indian National Congress, we find that it is not really uh, in depth. It is a very hollow kind of display of many things. Yeah, That scene that you were, uh, the, that instance that we were talking about, about the municipal chairman. Yeah, uh, The moment, you know, uh, Gandhi begins to give away those oranges to the children and Gandhi is also inviting one of the dirtiest boys in the groups in, in the group yeah to come over the municipal chairman he says you know he even for a moment he didn't he almost hated Gandhi for that but he also felt guilty for feeling that way he was wondering of course one should love the poor but why to invite them he's also very dirty <coughs> why to invite them into the veranda yeah so this is again contrary to what Gandhi really believed in that you know you can eventually bring in a reform in people's hearts when it comes to caste yeah because he strongly believed that it would not be useful to bring a law against untouchability yeah the reform should come from within yeah this is also exposing many of those things about you know how the the reform or the change will not always come from within and it is always easy to uh, you know, put up a self, yeah, put up a show, even without being entirely transformed. Yes, Nelson. Uh, I think I have to disagree with him that it hmm. would make sense. It will not make sense. Hmm. I think for anyone, it will make sense because Gandhi doesn't turn up suddenly in in like uh, as a very huge figure. It's like to the lens of people, like how he wrote before Gandhi comes, or how people reacted in hmm. the meeting, like how hmm. everyone and he himself was surprised. So. Uh, for, thing, for other readers who didn't know anything about this, it will be more interesting because it's some kind of mystery, like some kind of huge guys coming in this way, like some huge, like some very popular guy. And through the uh, lives of uh, Sri Ram and all, slowly, slowly you came to know what Gandhi is, <laughs> what he represents like that. So I think, it will, I think it will be more interesting. I feel like it will make sense to anyone who didn't have a, any idea of this. Okay, any responses to this? Do you agree with them? For a plain reading, it would be okay, but ha. I don't know, like for a deep understanding, knowing Gandhi would be more helpful. Yeah, I, I get your point, Nelson, but again, I'm asking uh, even after having read the novel without any background knowledge about Gandhi and nationalist movement, the moment you begin to know about it, yeah, you come across if you are reading this as a non Indian or someone who is not familiar with this uh, uh, historical background. And then you again go back to uh, you, know, you know get your historical facts right wouldn't it bring a different sort of uh, uh, reading altogether in the sense you know wouldn't the irony be more pronounced then yeah of course you know this is a coherent work even without knowing the uh, background yeah i agree with you yeah but i'm asking you would the knowledge of history make a difference in appreciating the use of irony over here or is it always already evident even without that? And that well, that's why I think I, I was telling mm -hmm. what what's interesting, what can be interesting for uh, like uh, a very uh, like a, a, a reader who didn't know anything about national mm -hmm. movement, like uh, how it was expressed, like the uh, like through like even Sri Ram himself didn't know anything about national movement. Mm -hmm. So through that he is like slowly, so he is curious. He becomes curious. So I feel like the reader will also be curious. Who is this guy? Like that, just like Sri Ram. Like the reader will go along with Sri Ram, like in the whole uh, uh, novel. So I I feel like yeah. So this will make sense to the guy because Sri Ram himself didn't know anything, and he like he started learning. He didn't have any idea of what Gandhi represented or something. Like that. 
So like so he'll go along with and that's why it's really interesting to go along with that character like for the reader as well. Right. Yeah. How useful or important is the perspective of Sri Ram? The perspective through which he is looking at the nationalist movement, Gandhi, non-violence, and everything that is not part and parcel of International Congress and Gandhi. <coughs> How important is that perspective? It's actually it's very important in this novel because uh, see the suppose if we look from the lens of uh, uh, the national movement, somebody uh, uh, then uh, like there will be a uh, some kind of judgment for why he's not committed like. In this case, uh, he's not committed because he didn't know anything. He's trying to like contradict himself with whatever he had. Right? So it's kind of uh, for me, it's interesting. Like for a normal guy, how it will react in that way. If we have known the national movement, then he's like, why he did, did like, like that? There will be some kind of judgment or some things like that, which will be, I think, less interesting. Yeah, and and for the novel, I think this perspective of Sri Ram becomes all the more important because it allows the author to play with a number of things. There is this uh, place where you know the uh, Sri Ram has this conversation with one of the um, uh, British people, yeah, Matheson, yeah, and about belonging, about national identity, and Sri Ram is saying, "I am an Indian." And this uh, British man is asking, "How old are you? How old are you? I have lived in India more number of years than you. you've ever lived. Yeah, so I am an Indian too." He is very confused. He doesn't know how to engage with it. Yeah, so the novel actually opens up a number of questions which are not really resolved within this space. Yeah, and also about you know the use of non-violence always, always. Yeah, there are moments when suddenly uh, he will come up with these things about you know. one has to shoot all the british and then somebody will tell you no 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 that's against mahatma's thing yeah then he also feels a little guilty but the moment you know he finds a an almost kindred soul in jagadish he finds very excited that oh i'm glad that somebody is there who is also thinking outside the framework of what gandhi is talking about but he is also not willing to go to that extreme yeah so what is the position that one should be adopting it also talks about perhaps the ambivalent positions within the international movement where one had to always you know affiliate oneself with one or the other yeah so which was this position away from all of these things yeah was it you know being as naive like shri ram or does somebody like shri ram a more informed shri ram was there a possibility for such a person to inhabit another space for space of politics away from gandhi away from uh subhash chandra bose yeah one doesn't know maybe he's also toy maybe the novel is also allowing us to toy with these you know different kinds of options yeah and there is this place where uh somebody is asking about his father and until that point he was very proud that you know he was a soldier he died in the war there is this other person who is asking him then he must have been a soldier in the british army gorpat said with a touch of contempt in his voice <coughs> Sri Ram noted it, but accepted it with resignation. He added as a sort of compensation. They say he was a great soldier. Possibly, possibly, said the other with patronage in his voice. Yeah, Sri Ram bore it as a trial. Yeah, so everything that he believed in is being questioned, and this is certainly not a position that he is really comfortable with. Yeah, but he doesn't know. He doesn't have. Sri Ram comes across as a character. who doesn't really always know how to respond to that yeah he is also perhaps the typical image of maybe a number of people like this who been weighed down by these dominant ideologies and doesn't always have the they don't always have the right kind of response and they don't know uh, what their affiliation exactly is yeah whether say owning up nationalist movement also becomes you know disowning a legacy that he is proud of yeah that is certainly not a he is not uh, uh, comfortable with that trade off yeah he doesn't want to he certainly wants to be associated with gandhi for uh, whatever reasons but he doesn't want to disown that legacy that from because the novel begins with that yeah about how his father died in war in uh, mesopotamia we don't find him romanticizing about his parents but that legacy certainly is something that he is proud of yeah so how do we accommodate all of these differing things yeah and also uh, that uh, uh, place where he goes to buy biscuits yeah and he suddenly launches into this 
uh, fiery attack about you know how dare you sell English <coughs> biscuits, right? And we know that is not very natural. He's not committed in that position. And the shopkeeper, yeah, think about the shopkeeper who had been selling English biscuits as one of the finest things that he has in his store, and he's totally bewildered. Yeah, why are people talking like this? Yeah. So uh, this all this novel also. Uh, draws our attention to this multifaceted society in uh, under Gandhian uh, uh, nationalist leadership, where you know half of the people were, people were not even aware that they were being exploited, half of the people were not even aware that they were you know not free. Like you know, he's telling the that cart puller, yeah, uh, Gandhi will Gandhi's movement will make you a free man, and he adds, yeah, you are not a free man now. Yeah, just in case you think you are. Free now, yeah. So these uh, uh, different ambivalences, you know, these dichotomies which were inherent in the nationalist movement are being talked about. But I don't know why this is still being seen as an apolitical novel. A number of people have talked about that. What do you think? <coughs> because we can see a way in which a different kind of politics, a possibility of a different kind of politics, is being enacted. So is it because the uh, novelist? the the personality of the novelist does not gel with you know whatever is being talked about because otherwise you know he did live a uh, very radical life yeah say if you compare uh, raja rao with narayan yeah narayan lived a very conservative life yeah and com he lived mostly in india he only kept you know these occasional relations that he had with graham green who also uh, helped him publish his novels Helped him, you know, get this international fame compared to Raja Rao. But Raja Rao's rhetoric, you know, in Kantapura will give us a feeling that he has not even moved out of this village, Kantapura. Yeah, that's a kind of tone, and that's a kind of uh, uh, you know words that you. One of you mentioned in the beginning, though, Raja Rao writes as if you know he's directly translated from Kannada too. He was thinking in English, uh, thinking in Kannada while he was writing the novel. That's a kind of feel that he is <coughs> trying to bring in. Yeah. But Narayan, on the contrary, he lived a very different life, but questioned a number of things through his work. But in the critical space, Raja Rao and Anand are seen as you know more serious novelists who would engage with serious themes, and Narayan is seen as a the popular one, the more enduring one, but a very non-committed political, apolitical, a non-committal writer. So we now uh, it's too early to respond to these questions, yeah. As and when we go through more novels, I also want you to think about the way in which critical opinions are shaped, yeah. How certain pre-existing definitions of the nation or about identity, about uh, politics, they also come to inform the way in which a writer is being labeled, yeah. A work is being uh, judged or analyzed, yeah. So uh, we'll just wind up. With this for today, uh, tomorrow we'll also look at some more instances from the novel, yeah, and uh, talk about what are the major themes that this novel talks about, yeah, how it differs, you know, from say a novel like uh, Kantapura, where nationalism is seen as this big thing which can unite people. Yeah, here we don't get that feeling at all. At least the protagonist. Is not himself convinced about that because had it not been for Bharati, maybe he would not even have taken those steps when children. And also this other question: Is this fascination yeah, that ha he, the passion that he has for Bharati, is it, was that the sole thing which led him, you know, all the way till the jail? He also lands up in jail, yeah. And Bharati was not really responsible for that, yeah. It was not Bharati's. Uh, you know instigations which led him to do the kind of things that he did, and uh, yeah, made him in present. Think about those things too. How you know the the plot cleverly uses certain people, and is the novel uh, deluding us into believing that it was all about Parthi? Yeah, is there a different politics that perhaps the protagonist wants to engage with, and he's not aware of it? Yeah, the way you know he responds to Jagadish. Yeah, and a sense of you know, uh, a sense of almost like a uh, a surveillance that he feels towards uh, Jagadish. Yeah, what would Jagadish feel if I don't do this right? 